Hello, sir. Let me start by thanking you for everything you've done already to help me. I'm 52 years old and recently went through a divorce. Just days after the divorce finalized, my ex came to me and showed a desire to stay. You see, I know that I was the problem. Just a few months prior to this, I had bought your your books, uh, How I Grew My Penis, Performance, Anxiety, Five Subtle Mistakes, and I just bought Daily Talk 101. Reading through your books and slowly putting to practice the wisdom contained in them, my confidence and self-esteem started to grow. My penis size has already grown from four and a half inches to six inches so far. Damn, nicely done. And I believe that in part why she got cold feet in leaving. I never wanted a divorce, but my lack of bedroom prowess is what I believe doomed our relationship. My ex had a very rough life in her early years. She's 35 and we've been together 13 years. Before me, she was repeatedly abused by her man, uh, including physically and sexually. She's always been shy and has never let me go down on her to perform kind of lingus. That's very, very common, by the way. Um, those two things that you just described are uh, very often tied together, in, from what I've seen at least. She is very timid, but I know somewhere buried in there is a woman who just wants to relax and trust to experience great sex. Correct. 100% correct. Can you give me an advice, any advice on how to break down that wall with her to help her become more sexually free? I'm sorry for the long-winded question. This ain't long-winded, trust me. I've, there's longer ones in there. Uh, I just wanted to give you some background. It's been about two weeks since we mutually decided to try and fix ourselves and our relationship. Thank you so much for your time. Well, first of all, good luck. I hope you can fix this. And, uh, I'm going to try my best to, uh, to help. Let's, so, basically, how can you break down that wall that she has? So, I've, I've seen women, I've seen women, like, literally, not me personally, but I've seen, I've seen experiences of this. Seen and heard, sorry, I should say, heard, um, you know, directly from the women. Experiences where they've, they, they had been, uh, like, totally traumatized, like, had, had sexual, sexual assault, sexual abuse, rape, in early parts of their life, and then they, uh, they got they had they had a sexual interaction with a man, a partner who allowed them to kind of like release all that trauma, um, ironically through very rough sex, ironically, um, and they at the end they climax and they end up crying in a good way, like a, a cathartic way, like it's like a release. They're finally able to let go. Um, so I, I'm, I'm saying this because you might find that. If when she does eventually let her, let her wall down and uh, open up like this to you, the way you want her to, you might find that happening. You might find her like breaking down and crying, and you're like, "Oh shit, what have I, what have I done? Have I done something bad?" May well, I like if you're if you're you know just by reading this, <laughs> you're not. The, I know you're not the kind of guy who's gonna gonna hurt a woman and push her boundaries and do anything she doesn't want to do. So, uh, you're you might be. Uh, worried that you accidentally stepped over a line and i'm prop I'm, I'm suggesting that you if you have an if you see that she has this kind of experience where she kind of she orgasms and then she breaks down and kind of cries and like needs to be held and stuff then what you've probably done is you've you've helped her overcome a lot of this trauma and kind of like get past it and like in turn like process it so that's the first thing yeah so how do you break the wall down um it's you're kind of, it's in a way you're kind of doing therapy on her um, but it's also sexual therapy as well. So it's it's not going to be easy and it's not going to be quick. I'll start by saying that. But you you kind of have to find the, like, you kind of have to dig a bit, um, like verbally and physically and mentally, and figure out what what the trauma is, where it came from, and like what it's like how she reacts to it and what she, what like what's its physical kind of manifestation so for an example with some women i'm just gonna throw out high i'm just gonna throw out examples of things i've encountered um like women won't like certain parts of their body touched because they were beaten and abused a certain way so certain women don't want to be choked and they have a very visceral negative reaction to being erotically choked in a safe way even. Even in a very, very safe, sens sexual, consensual, sensual way. They have a very negative reaction to being choked because in the past they had some boyfriend who like picked her up by her neck and threw her around the room or something. Right? He physically abused her like that. So when I say you have to identify like what the, how, it's, how the trauma is manifesting, that's what I mean. Like, like figure out what are the, the things that, that trigger the the trauma to come up in the first place. Because you have to identify the triggers to, to be able to heal them, right? Uh, 
because in a lot of a lot of times they're probably they're they're lying in front of something that could be very sexually gratifying and erotic and pleasing to her. So, does that mean you push it and, and do that? No, but you want to you're trying to identify these barriers and boundaries so you can at least explore them psychologically. You don't have to explore them physically unless she's unless she wants to do that, and you might get to the point where like. Oh, you've identified these these physical triggers that cause that bring up that trauma. Okay. And in discussions with her, she might decide, I want to try this now because I want to feel safe with it, with you, because of you. I want to do this and push past it so I can now get over it and feel safe. That's very that, that could be something you end up getting to. Uh, where else would we go? Would I go with this? Yeah, identifying the, identifying the the root causes of it though, um, and it's it's a it'll be a psychological thing, and very often it'll be a, you know, obviously it's going to be something very negative, right? Uh, where she was told like she was worthless, or she was told she was a, a cunt, a stupid a stupid cunt, or a slut, or, or or you know any think of anything negative and bad that a guy could say to a woman in, a, in an abusive scenario. Uh, but you want to try and find what these things are, and. You're going to want to try and reverse anchor the opposite. So if her ex was telling her that she's a stupid cunt while he's abusing her, for example. This is a very dark topic, by the way. Uh, but hopefully it helps. If her ex was saying she's a stupid cunt while he's abusing her. Well, you need to... You, need to, well, it, you want to identify that first. And then you want to reinforce subconsciously the idea that she is a smart woman you're, you're doing the, you want to reinforce the complete opposite the polar opposite of it and you want to re, you want to reinforce it subconsciously and the way you reinforce it subconsciously is during the act of sex ironically so the act of during the act of sex in a sexually aroused state uh, both men and women are in what's what's known as a a highly suggestible state it's actually a hypnotic state so, when she's highly aroused during the act of sex, you can use dirty talk in as a, po a way to positively uh, reaffirm things about her, as a way to heal her. You can use dirty talk by saying things. I love how I, I'm just gonna, I'm throwing things off the top of my head because I don't know the exact scenario, right? But let's stick with that uh, that example, hypothetical example that she's she was called stupid, but now so she's associating that with trauma. You want to reinforce the opposite. So we're going to psychologically reinforce the opposite and say something like, I love how fucking smart you are. Like every every time you open your mouth, my dick gets hard. I just made that off the top of my head, right? I could, if, I, if I had another fight, give me like a day and I'd probably come up with something better. But you get what I'm going with that, right? Like we're going to anchor, like, we're kind of, we're trying to anchor and appease, like, Tie together like these, these, this thing, like this in this example, intel being intelligent and smart, being intelligent, and smart, to uh, her sexual ego and sexual self esteem. Because what's happened over here in the negative experience is the opposite has happened. So we have, we have to destroy this anchor and create a new anchor, and the anchor being that she's a smart, intelligent woman, and that is what fucking that is the sexiest thing about her. So I hope that makes sense. That that example I've just gave because I think that's that's kind of the the. Initial stepping stone in the, in the direction you need to you need to take with this if you want to try and like break down that wall and help her heal this and overcome this trauma. And what you'll probably find is that if you if you are successful in this, and I'm not going to say it, it's definitely not fucking easy. It's definitely not easy. Uh, but if you're able to do this, you'll end up with a woman who is who is incredibly infatuated and in love with you, and, and is uh, yeah, basically like yeah, that's uh, the the issue that you had is not going to be an issue ever again. I will guarantee that. Um, not that that's the only thing that could, you know, prevent a divorce from ever happening ever again or with anyone. But in, in this particular scenario, that'll absolutely fucking do it. So good luck to, your, to you, my friend. I uh, wish you the best. And I, I really hope you succeed in this mission.